The remaining videos in this lesson focus on creating the second worksheet in Appendix B in your book, which you'll also find as a Sibelius and PDF file called Worksheet 2 in your Core Resources folder under Lesson 4. Make sure that you have this on hand before you begin. You're going to make this score from scratch, so start a new score in the Quick Start using a blank manuscript paper and then add an unnamed treble staff. Leave the time signature as 4-4 and change the key signature to open key slash atonal. Name the piece Very Difficult Music Test or something less silly if you prefer. Once you've done all of these things, click Create. If you look at the worksheet you're making, you may notice that it doesn't use Sibelius's standard font. It uses a common font called Arial. To change the font throughout the score, click the Dialog Launcher button in the Format group under the Text tab, which will open the Edit All Fonts dialog box. Under the Main Text Font, change the drop-down list to Arial and click OK. All text in your score will update to use the Arial font. Because the formatting of this worksheet is complex, it's best to work with a score with many bars in it. To add 100 bars to the score all at once, go to Home, Bars, Add and click the Add Multiple or Irregular Bars button and type 100 into the Create Bars dialog box. Then click OK and click on your score if you had no selection to add the bars. Now that you have lots of systems, you can see that there are bar numbers in the score. In a worksheet you don't need bar numbers, so turn these off by going to Text and then numbering, and then choosing No Bar Numbers. The first step of layout is to put the right number of bars into each system. As you've probably noticed, Sibelius resizes the width of each bar, and therefore the number of bars in any system, depending on how many notes there are in the bars. At the moment, each system has many bars because the bars are empty. In this case, we have four separate bars on the first system for the first question in the worksheet. Click on the bar line at the end of the fourth bar, and then press Enter or Return. A system break is added, which forces that bar line to jump to the end of the system. If you chose the wrong bar line, just press Enter or Return again to toggle the system break off. The second system requires only one bar, the third system two bars, and the fourth seven bars. So set up the layout for each system now as shown. To make sure the staff is big enough to write into with pencil, you can also make it a bit bigger. Choose Layout, Document Setup, and then Staff Size, and make it 8mm. If you're making worksheets for very young children, you might want to consider 9, 10 or even 11 millimetres. For now, we'll just put the notes into the score, and then we'll come back and add the text and graphics later. Before you put the notes in for the first question, you'll need to change the clef in the third bar. With no selection, simply press Q, the shortcut for clefs, to open the clef gallery, and then select the base clef. Click the clef into the start of bar 3, and then repeat the process, but this time add a return to treble clef in the start of bar 4. Next, put in the four pitches as whole notes or semibriefs using your preferred note entry method. Now it's time to create those gaps between the bars as you can see in the completed worksheet. Click on the bar line at the end of the first bar, and then find the Break group under the Layout tab in the ribbon. Inside there is a Split System button. You can quickly and easily repeat this process to create the next two gaps. As you create the gaps, you may notice cautionary clefts appearing at the end of bars before the clef changes, these are just like the cautionary time signatures and key signatures that you learned to hide in the last section of this lesson. 
Simply click those and press the shortcut to hide or show, which is Ctrl and Shift and H, or Command and Shift and H on a Mac. The last step with the notation in this question is to center the notes. Sibelius has written them musically correctly at the left-hand side of the bar where the first beat comes, but these kind of questions are usually centered. Make a passage selection of all four bars by double-clicking in any one of them, and then open the Inspector from the Home tab of the ribbon. You may like to stick the Inspector on by clicking the Push Pin button, since you'll use it a fair bit in this lesson. In the X field, under General, type 2 to offset the X position of all of the notes by two spaces. The notes should now appear centred in the bars. Next comes question two. This one is easy, since it's just an empty bit of manuscript for the student to write a melody in. First, insert a time signature by pressing T and clicking More Options. As well as choosing 4-4, you'll need to make sure that Allow Cautionary isn't checked as before, and then click OK and click the new time signature in. Add the A quarter note or crotchet at the start of the bar, and then hide the rests in the remainder of the bar. You know how to hide objects now. Last, but not least, you can add the double bar line at the end of the bar by selecting the existing bar line and then going to Notations, the Common Group, Bar Line, and choosing Double. The third question is a lot more of a challenge for you to set up because the two bars are indented from both the left and the right Plus, there's another staff to add to make a grand staff. To add in the extra staff, select the two bars and then press I, the shortcut for the Add or Remove Instruments dialog box. Click the existing unnamed staff in the list on the right and then click the Below button under Extra Staff to add an extra staff below it. Click OK and you'll see that the extra staff has been added to just those two bars. That's because you selected them first. The system requires a brace. Press Escape twice to make sure you have no selection, and then click on the Notations tab and find the Brace button in the Bracket or Brace group. Click right at the start of the new system to add the brace. Then press Q to open the clefs gallery again and add the bass clef to the right hand of the piano staff. To finish it off, you need to connect the bar lines between the right and left hands. Simply click on the bottom of the bar line in the right hand and drag it down. Easy. When you input the music into these bars, you'll need to revise how to put in two voices into the second bar of the right hand, just as you learned to do in Lesson 3 with drum notation. Once the music is complete, you can indent the star from each side. The left side is done quite easily by clicking the leftmost line and dragging it in. If you need to control the exact measurement, for example, if you had multiple staves that all needed this same indent, then you should use the gap before bar field in the inspector. In this case, the gap required is 34 spaces. Unfortunately, you can't indent the right side of the system with quite the same level of accuracy. You can indent it by dragging, but note that you don't drag the bar line. Instead, you need to click just to the right of the end of one of the staves to grab hold of what I call the super magic secret hidden handle, which can then be dragged to indent the system. Be patient if you don't find this point at first. Clicking on something that you can't see is an acquired skill, only held by very advanced Sibelius users and also players of some very bizarre role-playing computer games. If you want to align a right indent in more than one staff, you can turn on staff rulers, which are found in the View tab of the ribbon in the Rulers group. Drag the right indent until it's about 68 millimeters. You can't do much for question 4 right now, because it involves pictures rather than music, so move on to question 5, which is about rhythmic errors, and so involves forcing Sibelius to have bars that don't add up, not something that Sibelius really likes doing. You'll achieve this by actually adding in time signatures that match the music, and then deleting them later. So, add a 3-4 in the first bar, making sure that you don't allow the cautionary, 
and then add a 7 8 in the third bar. Then you can copy the 3 4 into the fourth bar and put a 2 4 in the sixth bar. Next, input the key signature and notes just as shown in the worksheet and on the screen. When you're done, simply select the unneeded time signatures and press delete or backspace to delete them. If Sibelius asks you if you want to rewrite the music, say no. Next, hide the quarter note or crotchet rest at the end of the fourth bar. This is one way of making the bar not add up. The other is deleting the time signatures after putting a different number of notes in the bar, for example, the two four bars at the end. Once you're done, delete all of the remaining bars as you did in the first worksheet and you're ready to move on to text.